all of these problems, if you have no jobs for the Filipinos because you don't have industries, if you don't have positions for researchers, scientists to stay, and if you don't have good future, what do you do? Just cry and sit down in the corner? No. We are more positive than that. Now, if you don't have those industries, then the best way is to build those industries. Rather than importing technology all the time, we can actually build the technologies here. We can actually make the things here. We can actually be starting Filipino industries. Why are we not doing it? But in the first place, what is industrialization? And what is national industrialization for that? Industrialization is actually about building the capability to make things. Okay? Essentially, in more technical terms, it's having self-sufficiency in building capital goods. Now, capital goods, if there are economists around, are really about having factories that will allow you to build other factories. Machines that will build other machines. We don't have that. We just import the machines. If they break down, we, then we buy another one. That's more often what ha happens in our industries. And we don't have trains. We import the trains. They break down, we buy new trains. Right? We don't build the trains. There are research that are actually building the trains, but they're not connected together because there's no train building industry. Why don't we have train building industries? Because we don't have steel making industry, etc. And therefore, that's the whole point of having industries here in the country. One is not just because it will give you a modern and diversified industrial economy, industrial meaning you can produce the things that you would be needing, you will also secure livelihood. Because if you build the factories, then you will need people to, people to go into the factories and work. They don't have to go to Saudi anymore. Then you can satisfy basic needs. Probably not your iPad yet, but if you ever would need a tractor, if you're a uh, farmer, if you ever would need a small transportation uh, truck, if you would ever would need um, your clothes, etc., then we can produce those basic needs. Probably in the next few cycles, we can build better uh, products. That's where your marketing people will come. That's where your business people will come, right? And that's why we would need not just the scientists and engineers, but all the other allied um, professions. That would feed into a healthy and diversified economy. But the national word there is very important. Because right now, China and the US is in a trade war. US does not want anything from China the, and would rather produce on their own. China would ban US products and would want to produce on their own. Okay? The whole context of producing for national needs or producing primarily for domestic production is the whole crux of the word national in national industrialization. Kung susunod tayo dun sa nangyayari sa world market, bumagsak ang China, talo tayo. Kung China punta natin. Kung ang US ang punta natin, bumagsak ang US, talo din tayo. Kung sino ba nakabitan natin, umakyat bumaba ang world market, susunod lang ang, ang, ang future ng Filipinos. But we can actually build for ourselves, primarily. Yung kailangan muna niya, ninyo. Ang i-target natin, and then sakala lang natin, problemahin kung gusto pa natin mag-export. It doesn't preclude any export, but you produce primarily for your domestic consumption. And the whole real, uh, way of trying to address what we need would be the whole context of this industrialization push. It's not just building your industries for industry's sake. It's building your industries for Filipinos. Minsan, malulugi ka sa umpisa kasi hindi pa naman talaga 
madaling magtayo ng mga uh, industries. But you have, we have to look into a longer term um, valuation because that's how you would actually um, give um, economic sense into what we're building. Now, the best way to appreciate national industrialization is to look at what's happening right now. We're exporting agricultural and agricultural and extractive raw materials. We're just exporting rock and yet importing steel. We're exporting grains and yet you're buying bread, uh, wheat processed for bread. Right? We, we import a lot of things, okay? at the expense of cheaper exports. Okay. And whenever you need something to buy, usually you buy it finished already. You buy a computer, you buy a projector, you buy a LCD screen, you buy, um, well, not the chair, probably they're making the chairs here, but you buy the saw for, the cha for making the chair, even the hammer, actually, <laughs> for the chairs will probably be imported. And therefore, your finished goods already are coming in. Agricultural commodities and even capital is coming in as imports already. So ganyan, bakit mo pa kailangan ng electrical engineer kung ganito na yung binibili mo? Bakit mo pa kailangan ng plastics expert kung okay na naman yung pakiramdam ng plastic covering nito? Why would you need uh, those experts when you're already importing finished goods. That's the reason why you don't have basis for scientists. Why would a company hire somebody who's an expert in science or engineering when all the things that they would buy are already finished and need no research anymore? And kung meron man, ang nangyayari is that we will be just assembling or reassembling these things. And probably this might have been assembled here in the Philippines. Okay? But export it as a whole. Not, exp not sell it to you as a finished product. Do we really have basis for industrialization? Uh, can we still make it? Well, the nice thing about the Philippines is that we, have, we really do have a um, comprehensive um, natural resource base. We have metals, we have minerals, we have energy. And it's all blue all there. We have marine resources. We're the center of the center of biodiversity. We have all a lot we have a lot of those um, resources here. But resources are just one part of the equation. The other part is your forces of production. Your forces of production include your workers, your peasants, professionals like you, okay? That includes scientists and technologists. And if you have both of them, we actually do have forces of production, but we export it to Saudi, Hong Kong, Europe, the US. If they don't have reason to go out anymore, then probably we can actually build the industries here in the country. If we ever do build a industrial policy, how will it look like? Well, one, we have to have a public sector control of vital industries. Now, the reason that vital industries include the basic industries that you would be needing, like electricity, water, serv and other services, transportation, distribution, etc. Now, the reason here is this, very simple. Um, suppose you have a production plant in Leyte for copper, and you have a industrial plant somewhere in um, Mindoro for copper tubing. Now, how, how would you transport okay, those um, raw metal to your copper tubing plant if you do not really have control over the lines of transportation. Now, does it mean you have to own it? No, not really. You just have to have control. Uh, let me give you a reason why control is important. 
the best example is the MRT. Uh, the MRT, as you would know, go from along EDSA, okay, it's a privately owned company, the government sold its uh, control. Um, and even if you have trains running with open doors and uh, trains shutting down every station, the government cannot force the company to operate correctly because it does not have control. In 2007, there was a very big typhoon somewhere in Marinduque and uh, Romblon. And MV Princess of the Stars actually uh, uh, sank, carrying it within several hundreds of people. Now, the next day, the Marine Authority actually shut down the owners, um, all the ships of the owner of that, of the MV Princess of the Stars. 30% of all inter-island trade stopped. That means the control of that company is already one-third of all inter-island trade. Now, th we don't want such a situation that, well, uh, that the owners of the shipping company would refuse to do industrial production. So that's why you have to have control. It doesn't have to be ownership, you just have to have control. And we don't really want big monopoly operations because it will be detrimental in the national interest. The other one is an active or biased support for Filipino firms. This has been there since the 1950s and nobody really uh, seriously gave uh, support for Filipino firms. Always the mantra of neoliberal thinkers in the government would be to invite more foreign um, investment, wait for China, wait for the US, wait for Japan, etc. But nowhere do you hear I will give support for him or her, Filipino firms. Uh, we cannot have industrial policy that will always be dependent from foreign um, investors. They will never try to industrialize the country. They have their industries at home. They want to sell to you finished products, and they will avoid doing this. And if we want to have industrial, Filipino industrial um, companies, then we have to give them tariff protection, give them accessible credit, tax exemptions, government procurement would give priority to Filipino firms, and even build state enterprises. The government itself build these enterprises. We don't have that. For 40 years, we're always waiting for foreign investment. Even the build, build, build program of the government is waiting for foreign investment and foreign loans to do it. We don't do it ourselves. Does that mean we don't want people? I mean foreigners? No, not really. What we don't want is the situation where we don't, we're not at par with each other. Because right now, even if the Constitution, 1987, actually prohibits anything larger than 60% ownership, uh, is being violated. In the proposed federal constitution, we don't see these limits anymore. Okay. Um, now, what we want is real technology transfer. If we have investors, it doesn't really, it's not bad to have foreign investors, but we cannot depend on them to industrialize our country. But if we do have foreign investors, they have to leave their technology with us. Or else, they can do what Intel did, the, the chip maker, uh, they were here in the 1970s up to 1990s. When they left, they actually brought all their plants and my classmates with them So, uh, in Malaysia. So they did not leave any production, chip production here. They were producing chips in the country, but when they left, they didn't, did not leave anything. Okay. Can we still fund these things? In fact, the nice thing of nice, if you would want to call it nice, uh, thing about the 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 pork barrel issue 
is that we find some suddenly that we the, the government really have has money, and in fact, even right now we can see that the government, the president, can actually command several billions of pesos at his fingertips, and therefore they can really, if they just wanted to, build the, the industries themselves. The money is there, right? But well, this was a um, a research that. Um, you can find it in the Philippine Journal of Science. But the dots there here are NGOs. Some of the dots are also the congressmen and senators. The thickness of the lines is the money that was uh, given from one NGO to a congressman. And the colors were automatically generated to find who gives to whom regularly. So the community. So the red ones, well, not the pink in this color. Uh, the pink ones are the ones that were jailed. Okay, Some of them are out already. <laughs> but you know, the yellow, the blue, the green, the uh, brighter yellow, and even the red ones are still there and probably running this 2019. But how much do you need? Okay. Well, if you look at it, how, does, how much is one power plant to produce 600 megawatts? Now, 600 megawatts, one unit cost is 45 billion pesos. Okay? Uh, we are actually using around 15,000 uh, megawatts I'm sorry, of electricity for the whole country. Okay? Now, steel plant costs like that, etc. If you want to make chips, computer chips, then you would need around 46, 465 billion uh, pesos. Now, with the whole uh, 2017 budget, you can actually build that. Of course, you won't use your whole budget for it. You can allocate 5% of your annual budget. Now, if you look at it, you can actually build these ones. How? Kailangan mo lang isang shipyard, kailangan mo isang chip making, etc. Now. 5% of your budget, annual budget, can build already around four uh, power plants. Four power plants, that's 600 megawatts times four, that's 1.2 gigawatts. You already have added 10% to electricity capacity in the country. You build steel plants the next year, six years then, then you can build around 2.8 or three steel plants that will produce 5 million tons per year. Kumakain natin ng bakal, Bawat region, Bawat Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao could have one. And then LRT, you can actually have 56 kilometers of line for 5% of your annual budget. That will bring you LRT from here to the Gupa. Sana 12, 20 pesos din ang pumasari. A chip making company, of course, is very costly. Um, you can wait several years to do it. An auto plant, you can actually build tractors, trucks, etc. with 5%, three of those plants. And you can build two of the largest, two of, equivalently of Hanjin, which is supposedly the largest Asia uh, ship making company in Asia, which is in Subi, which only gave around 80 billion pesos. That's really, quote unquote, cheap for a 3.7 trillion peso budget. And therefore, with six years, you can actually build, 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 and industrialize the country. But I don't know what We don't see those things. Why? Because the policy is not there. But what kind of industrialization do we need? What do we prioritize? The first one, of course, is to address the needs of the 70%. You have 70% of your people right now engaged in agriculture and they have a problem, of course, of they don't have land, so you have to have land reform. Okay, not the land reform in Boracay, but the land reform that would really address the problem of the monopoly of land. The monopoly of land meaning the only a few people would actually own hundreds of hectares of land holdings in that are productive, and therefore you have to give or empower the farmers 
to actually have to own their land. Not, it's not just land ownership, of course. It's also agricultural development. You have to provide them tractors. You have to provide them um, fertilizers. You have to provide them support. You have to provide them credit. And yet, to ensure that they will pay, you have to make them productive. right? And therefore, you have to improve their farming technologies, break all those cartels that will try to import rather than to produce locally. Okay? And therefore, that's why we call agriculture as the base. Once you build the base, you will actually have a lot of people who would be having their lives better. Kung magsasaka sila dati, kahati nila yung may ari ng lupa, kung hindi na nila kahati, mabilis agad may productive increase sa kanilang kakayanan to buy things and even to um, find work. Now, the problem with this, if you industrialize and modernize your agriculture, then, in dating sampo ang nagsasaka sa isang hektarya, ilan na lang kailangan mo? Isa na lang. Yung, may, yung kaya na lang sumakay sa traktora at ikutin yung buong sakahan niya. What will happen to the nine? Well, that's why you should not actually divorce agricultural in, uh, investments and um, modernization to the whole industrialization policy. Because agriculture will do provide, it will provide subsistence, pagkain, it will also be a source of industrial raw materials, um, biogas, fibers, etc. It's also a market for industrial products. So if you can make tractors, then you have people who will buy tractors. If you can make chemical inputs, they have people who will buy chemical inputs, etc. And it's also a reservoir of labor power. In other words, if you free them from doing artisanal agricultural work, then you can actually have them uh, go to your factories instead, as long as you build the factories. It's also a source of accumulation funds. And um, the reason for that is, of course, if you invest in agriculture, everybody is still going to eat anyway. So you're, you're sure to have some people who would actually be at the receiving end of agricultural products. Kakain naman tayo lahat. Kagamitin naman natin lahat yung production. Sa agricultura. But on the other side of the equation, you have to build your industries as well. You cannot industrialize agriculture and leave it at that. Because who will provide the tractors? Who will provide the machines? Who will provide the things that they will need for industrial agriculture? You have to have a part that produces those industrial products. Modern machinery, modern power, chemical fertilizers, pesticides, and even all the modern production needs of agriculture. You can also produce, of course, light industrial machines um, for in, uh, light industry. But this is where scientists, engineers would have to discover newer processes, better ways to make things, newer products, etc. Because that's where innovation is needed. Agriculture has been there for 11,000 years. Okay? Um, we can do a lot of with it, but here in the country with, lim uh, with the resources that we have, with the elect uh, energy that we have, what can we do in terms of industry? And since everybody now knows how to avoid dirty industries, how can we make industries clean? This is also a problem. That's why you would need scientists. That's why you would need chemists, physics, engineers, etc. Of course, hindi natin pwedeng kainin ang makina. Hindi kayo pwedeng magsuot ng gears. Kailangan nyo ng pang-araw-araw ng pang-gamit. And that's where your um, light industries that will be coming in. Now, it's, it will raise your living standards because we will have available stuff already to buy. We don't have to wait for imports to come in. It's, it requires smaller investments, quick returns because everybody's going to use it every day. And that's where you can actually accumulate funds for industrial development. Now, why is, it, why is the leading factor called 
the heavy industry is called the leading factor. Now, let me just go back a bit. Now, it includes base metals, chemical production, petrochemicals, pharmaceuticals, precision instruments, machinery, electronics, consumer durables, etc. And the reason why it's called the leading factor is because once you have, say, basic chemical production, you can produce the chemicals that you need, then you can produce a lot more with those chemicals. It leads the way to new products, new processes. If you, have, you can produce steel, then you can produce a lot of things other that will be using steel. It will open the way to steel production. The steel production, I'm sorry, will open the way to other machineries, etc. So if you have electronic production that you need not to import a lot of things, then you can make a lot of things like computers, uh, high-end uh, IT, etc. Diving prospects, you have to really check whether it's going to happen. Um, there was a talk with the um, in the F, for example, to, to, to supposedly address agrarian reform, national industrialization, and even environmental production, but it has been stopped already. But what can we do? Okay. We have to find science and technology that is tuned to the needs of the people. And taking into account the whole economy, this means that we have to really push for national industries. Okay. We have to find ways to have this industrialization plan and demand it from the government. We cannot just sit idly, because sitting idly will just produce the same things that have been happening for 40 years. For example, in terms of science and math education, we should actually do our part. Well, I have a project, for example, called Visor, that create science kits for high schools to address the lack of science um, science laboratories in the country. 35% of our high schools would not have any modern science equipment. And those who said that they are modern, quote unquote, actually are just pointing to their laptop and their projector as modern lab equipment. But even with this project, for example, it has been very difficult because you cannot find any local production here, full 100%. We do have a local producer, we're talking to one, but they're also importing all of their um, parts from abroad. So it's not really technically 100% Filipino uh, product. It's Filipino made, it's Filipino created, it's Filipino um, produced, but all the parts are still from the outside. With, with, I've been doing a lot of research, for example, on this, and um, we have been trying to produce low-cost equipment for science education, for I, um, Internet of Things, for sensors, etc., by actually trying to use available software and available hardware designs and implementing them ourselves. Okay, and uh, we don't really do. We do a lot of um, IP generation, intellectual property generation. But for example, the Visor project, all the intellectual property of that has been licensed to DepEd royalty free. Okay, uh, we're not going to earn anything from DepEd. Well, I think I will earn quote unquote much with better students that will be coming from high school and that's good enough for me. Uh, but of course, for private schools, depending on the licensee, they can charge. But for public schools, we're giving it license free. The problem is how to translate this into industrial products, right? So really, the problem of having all of these ideas, all of these um, inventions, if you would want to call them, is that in the academe, even making startups, etc., is going to be very difficult unless you have the policy environment that will actually make you make things for the Filipinos. So we've been using this underwater camera, air quality sensor, 
uh, water quality sensor. Uh, the incubator cost around uh, half a million pesos, but we've made one just for one petri dish for our cancer research. Then it costs around five thousand pesos. Okay. So I have a lot of research, but that research really would be very crucial in in actually building the capacity of the Philippines. But unless you have that policy environment, that national industrial push of building things for the Filipinos, then this will actually just be papers, inventions, etc. that will be very far from the experience of the, the ordinary Filipinos, unless you actually go and bring it to them. That's where, uh, that's why we have an organization called the GAM, or the Advocates of Science and Technology for the People, where we actually bring all of these technologies to communities that will be needing them. Um, for example, you have the those who were uh, the Kadamae people in Pandi who did not who who did not have any electricity once they were given the the their houses. Then we're trying to figure out how to use solar power for them, okay? Or a mining affected com com uh, community that has been um, under the 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 uh, under a a mining company that might have spills. So they wanted to have um, monitoring for their rivers so that they can be uh, assured that they can drink the water or use it for agriculture. A lot of these things do take time and uh, because you have to go to the communities and ask them what they actually need. Um, they probably would need, not need my paramecium robots yet. Uh, but at least when they need it, they will have it. The best um, quote for probably to end the, the discussion is that it comes from uh, Einstein. And uh, he was saying here that man can find meaning in life, short and perilous as it is, only if he devotes himself to society. And this is how we could actually be more meaningful if we actually devote our science and technology to society. Thank you very much. And good night.